Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Kirk here again at Ops Alpha. So I wanted to tell this story tonight, and I think it's probably going to be a good story and a good analogy for uh, people to use, and I really hope that you share this story. So if you think about somebody in your life who's investing in stocks or trading in the markets, has an advisor or something like that, I think this story will be helpful. I don't know if advisors will hate me or love me for this, probably more so hate me for this, but um, but here we go with the grocery store investor, as I call it. And that's my own name. I haven't heard this this analogy anyplace else, so that's my own name for this. But here's the deal. Um, and then we'll backtrack, so I'll tell you the story. But let's assume now that you go into the grocery store, which you guys do every day, right? Or mostly every day, or if you're like my family with two girls, we go to the grocery store seven times a day, it feels like, because they're always out of diapers or milk or something. But you go into the grocery store, and you're meted by somebody at the front of the door. And they're very nicely dressed and look very smart, prestigious university, uh, diploma, degree, etc. And they say, listen, listen, this store here is totally open to you. You're free to continue through the store and walk up and down the aisles. But did you know that there's a lot of aisles in this store? And more importantly, there's a lot of products to choose from. I mean, you got all these different kinds of milk and there's coffee creamers and ice cream and, you know, mac and cheese. I mean, there's so many things to choose from. Why don't I do your shopping for you, right? And so they meet you at the door and they say, look, you know, just tell me, you know, generally what you're after and I'll do the shopping for you. So again, the store is totally open to you, but I'll do the shopping for you. And I say, great, that's fine. You know, you do the shopping for me. That sounds great. Like, I don't, I don't even want to think about it. I hate going to the grocery store anyway. It's complicated. Yeah, I don't know what to buy. And so they say, okay, listen, but I'll take a 1% fee from everything that you buy today. So when you get to the end, like I'll do the checkout, I'll take care of everything, but I take a 1% fee from this. I mean, if you probably know where this is going, but I'll keep going with this, right? And so you might say to yourself, well, okay, sounds good, like reasonable 1%, like so, you know, if it's a hundred bucks, they take a dollar out of it. Like how bad can that be, right? Like the, you know, the cost of me going through the aisles, like I'd rather let them do it. But then it gets worse, right? So then they say, okay, well, that sounds good. But now everything that I touch and I take off the shelf and then put into the cart, that also has a transaction fee. And those fees could vary. Could be half a percent, could be 1%. And every time that I decide to take something off of the shelf and put it into the cart or take it out of the cart and put it back into the shelf, that's a transaction fee. And it's a fee that you pay. And so I'll just add up all these fees and we'll just you know basically total on the end. You don't really feel it because it's still in that you know cost that you paid. And again, I'll take my 1% cut out of the whole deal. And so now it's not starting to seem so obviously good, right? I mean, the guy's basically charging a fee to go up and down the aisles, which you could do by yourself if you want to. Um, and then there's a fee for just taking stuff off the shelves and you know basically transacting. And then it gets even better, right? So he says, well, listen, you know, you're going to get older and you're going to, you know, the seasons change and, you know, different times of the year, you probably don't want necessarily, you know, steaks in the winter. You might want steaks in the summer and maybe hot chocolate in the winter. So I will allocate basically your cart for you during the year. So, you know, as we get towards the winter, we'll start putting more things in there like, um, you know, chocolate, hot chocolate and, you know, more coffee, et cetera. And so, again, we'll take care of all this for you. And we'll just redistribute your, you know, basically your money and your groceries across all of these different things each year. And again, that sounds really good on the outside because, hey, why not? Like, yeah, of course, like change of seasons. I'm getting older. I may not, you know, need as much ice cream uh, later on as I maybe do now. And so again, but it's all these transaction fees that keep racking up. But again, you have somebody taking care of it. So you don't have to think about it. You don't have to, you know, it doesn't have to process in your mind. And so as we wrap up this analogy, and hopefully you guys have enjoyed this, if you have, let me know and kind of add the hearts and thumbs here. But this analogy, if you haven't already caught on, is almost a direct analogy for how the financial advisory market works. And again, I'm not, I'm not here to like straight up knock financial advisors. That's not what I'm trying to do. But I'm trying to educate people, hopefully, on just understanding like you're doing the same exact thing. Thing if you go out there and don't pay attention to any of this stuff, right? So if you do pay attention to it and you think that your person that you deal with, guy or girl, doesn't have to be guy, right? But I'll just say guy because it's easier to say. Um, but guy or girl that you deal with, if you think that they're worth the value so that you don't have to think about it and you don't have to go shopping down the aisles, great, right? But just be aware of what you're getting yourself into. And in fact, a lot of these, what I see often, and, and I... And people can back me up on this too, because you guys have seen this too. 
But what I see often is that like advisory fees now are pretty much AUM. So assets under management, 1%, seems like it's nothing. We're skimming 1% off the top. But 1% adds up. It really adds up at the end. And that's just the management. That's just the advisory fee. Then you throw in like if they're in mutual funds and stuff. I mean, some of these mutual funds are, you know, one, two, three percent, you know, costs. And then the reallocation that happens, this, you know, like automated allocation, you know, transitioning you out of bonds or stocks or whatever the case is, that adds up as well. So here's a stat I think you guys will enjoy. And again, I hope you guys enjoyed this and you can share it with your friends and family. The one percent transaction fee at the end of 20 years costs you 12% of your possible account value. So if your account value was, you know, whatever it was, $100,000, then you actually lost 12.4% just to fees at the end of 20 years, right? That's insane. That's a lot of account value lost. At the end of 30 years, it's 18.7%. At the end of 40 years, you lose a quarter of your account's value just to fees. So that 1% fee, it just diminishes your ability to compound your growth, right? All stuff that you can do by yourself. I mean, literally you can do like with, and I'm just speaking about stocks right now, but like stocks, you can do all by yourself now for zero cost, zero, right? Like except, you know, the ETF, like load fees, which you do like a Vanguard index, it's like nothing. You can basically do everything you need to do for no cost. You have sign up with like a broker like Robinhood, which is free trades, ETF stocks, et cetera, zero cost. And you can shave all this for yourself. So just think about that, like 40 years of your investing, your hard earned money and a quarter of that value is poof, gone, gone in an instant, you know, over this course of time, because you're just, you know, paying out this 1% thing. It's crazy. So like I said, I don't know why. I thought about this analogy today, but I figured it might be helpful because people don't often relate, you know, the options market or the stock market to like grocery shopping. And so I thought about like, well, that's basically what it is. It's like somebody, you know, saying like, hey, it's an open market. You can go in and choose to grocery shop down any aisle you want, right? Like that's what I, I propose. Like, yeah, you go in the door, you choose what you want, you know, cut out everything. You can make better decisions for yourself anyway. And effectively, you're never gonna, you know, be, you know, like if you stay with most like, indexes or ETFs in the stock side, you're you know going to do better than 90% of the people anyway. So why not do it by yourself and save the fees and basically get back 25% of your account value. So again, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Let me know in the comment section right below if you guys did. And of course, if you thought this was interesting, maybe share it. I think actually some like young kids, uh, millennials, etc. I think you guys would really enjoy this and they'd kind of eat this up. It's a really easy transition into investing and I, and I think that makes sense. So, um, so yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy this and we'll talk to you guys soon. Take care.